ready. Set. Gamecast. Welcome to Ready Set Gamecast, a bi weekly podcast about video games and hostile takeovers? What? Welcome to Ready Set Gamecast, episode 52. All your podcasts are belong to us. That's right. This is a takeover. <laughs> like, a hostile takeover, I believe, is what Bryce just said. I think it was a violent takeover. Oh, uh, if I violence. remember. Yeah, I, I mean, shots were fired. Whoa. Teddy's dead. Weapons were drawn. Yeah, Teddy, unfortunately. I I'm now Darian. You can tell by my mm-hmm. my hair. Yeah, the hair. You dyed it different than yeah. than you normally do. I like the change. It it looks looks pretty good. I'm interested oh, in, in what you've done uh you know on the, the bottom end. I've never seen that before. I took the rest of the hair and I uh-huh. just glued it okay. to my face. Oh, ah, okay. I might have to try that sometime. Th- that sounds like a good idea. Um yeah. So this is Ready Set Gamecast. Uh, it's a bi-weekly podcast about video games and uh, hacking and murder. Um, it's really just murder. the number one Dota 2 slash Underlords uh, podcast. Um, and yeah, we're going to tell you all expert. about this. Um, if you want to know who set off this hack, you can go to twitch.tv slash superkillerbunny and see somebody that looks an awful lot like Bryce here it's an incredible likeness really i mean it's really weird i think he might be a a long lost twin um and (laughs) for darian you know where where do you go to find darian these days uh twitch.tv slash dilbert pickled i love it starts with a d ends with a d oh it's basically the same thing as dexterity that's that's fantastic i mean it's a, an interesting name change, but that that works. It works very well. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> been an evolution. So the people that we murdered, I mean, um, that we have <laughs> taken over for, uh, they're going to PAX West. Um, so they decided they couldn't do this and go to PAX West, apparently. A week before. A week before <laughs> PAX. Before PAX. Uh, they didn't tell us about this at all beforehand. So it's Sunday. We're recording. This isn't being streamed uh, like it normally is um, because, you know, we're lazy. My, my take is why stream a podcast? Busy. Yeah, you why know? stream on demand content? Exactly. What are you doing? I appreciate Teddy. that. What are you doing, Ted? Teddy's got to broadcast his whole life. That's why we killed him. I mean, he's broadcasting his whole life. We got to stop this nonsense, okay? Broadcast what you want, and not your whole life. All right. That's that's a beautiful philosophy. All right. Um. <laughs> so, uh, what have you been playing, uh, Lord Pickles? Oh my goodness! The only thing I've played <laughs> for about a month now. <laughs> is tft and that is team fight tactics right team fight tactics okay it's, it's not basically team dota fortress underlords 2 not team fortress 2 but okay so i have a lot of questions um how is it That's different fair. from underlords so that actually is something i was hoping you could shed some light on i'm okay. um, not really sure okay I, neither am i because i have not played tft yeah see that's the thing is like i i saw the auto chess auto battler games kind of swelling and i was like all right yeah we've got the valve one with dota we've right. got the league one i've never played league mm-hmm. so i'm I'm really open to jumping into any of these and i didn't choose auto yeah. chess i guess for for whatever reason i was like that one doesn't look that great yeah at this auto point chess, i think uh underlords is is kind of taking over taking that auto yeah. Chess. yeah so then i was watching a bunch of people are streaming tft and i was like okay mm-hmm. you know league's pretty big so like this this will last to some degree you know Mm. they seem like they're into it i might as well commit here and play this but i am holding out for a blizzard one even though like i know people don't like heroes of the storm but i think blizzard has a pretty good opportunity to make a good auto battler yeah i think i think blizzard could make something really interesting um like 
kind of like uh, their their heroes of the storm blizzard mashup. Um, I think that that would work really well. Um, they've yeah. got a lot of uh, Overwatch heroes. You've got Diablo. Yep. For me, Diablo is the Blizzard game. Like when I think okay. about Blizzard, I think Diablo, and then I think StarCraft, and then Warcraft. Yeah. And then all the way at the bottom of the list is WoW. Um, wow, and Overwatch doesn't even make your list. Overwatch is like <laughs> there, and I forget that it's a Blizzard game, um, and until I have to launch it, um, I don't play yeah. it very often. So uh, I guess shame on me. I have fun with the friends that I play it with, but I don't really love it. Love it. So yeah, um, it's not something I play normally. Like I could see them either doing yeah, just a Heroes of the Storm, or they could just be like you know one of our games. And specifically in my mind, I think of like Overwatch has like a good variety of characters at this point that are like yeah. all standout characters. So you could easily fit them into an auto battler type thing. Oh yeah, I feel like every time I boot up Overwatch, it has like seven new he- heroes. I'm like, yeah. I, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, there's all these bouncing balls everywhere. Um, although shout out to Ash, the hero. There's no other heroes in uh, Overwatch now. So uh, <laughs> like, she was like three three heroes ago I at this know. point too. She like <laughs> I, there's that uh, that disco ball guy who shoots the disco ball out and is like a hero or something. I can't remember his uh, name. The new guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know his what name? his name. It's. <sighs> It's time for some Googling. Uh, <laughs> Sig- it's Sigma. 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 Right. I knew, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it was like Ligma. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that's where I was coming from. All right. Uh. If you're listening right now and you're wondering, what's Ligma? <laughs> <laughs> Ligma balls got him. What? Uh, <laughs> there's your weekly teddy. Uh, that, was a, that was a pretty good teddy. Yeah. Got him. I don't want to talk about it. Oh yeah. Um <laughs> uh the uh, yeah, so TFT. So it's an auto battler. It yeah. Um I guess I'll describe how the game works. Yeah, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh you and a and seven other players are facing off in like a last man standing type thing where you'll fight head to head against one of them at a time. Okay. Um you can see everyone else's play area um and it kind of plays out like a card game or like a little bit like a chess game. Um so you're building an army on your space and assembling them on a in TFT it's a hex grid. So it's hexagonal spaces so you lay them out um each of your heroes and they all have different basically kits of like there's an ability or a class uh, tied to them okay so you might have like a noble knight for example okay and then if you get multiple knights you get a buff to your knights if you get multiple nobles that activates a buff and so you're building your army this way and battling against the other players Mm -hmm. there's also items and uh item crafting sort of thing uh, and then you're you're primarily getting your cards for your army through uh, little five card hands that mm-hmm. are shared between everyone. So it's a it's a pool between everyone in the game. Every time you refresh, you know the cards you just saw are probably showing up for someone else. Right. So there's probably th- there's kind of three levels of strategy to it and a little bit of rng in in Mm -hmm. those Mm -hmm. um so a lot of people actually don't like it because of how much rng ends up playing into it so yeah you have just described uh dota underlords um okay which i think that it works for most auto chess games right like i think all three of the auto chess games are very similar right now um I landed on Underlords just because it was in it was on Steam and I didn't have to download yeah. another launcher. Um, although I have since like somebody recommended TFT to me that I trust quite a bit, um, and uh, so I might play that eventually. Mm. I don't know, um, but uh, yeah, I started Underlords uh, when it I think when it went live like for public uh, play like maybe that same day. Um, because strategy games, I love strategy games. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty much the same thing. Like you get a shop of five heroes, um, and you 
pick heroes and they have alliances. They all kind of go together. Um, I think from what I've been told, the biggest difference between uh, Underlords and TFT right now uh, is that Underlords basically guarantees that you get an item with, at every creep okay. round. Um, that would be a nice and TFT addition. doesn't. Yeah. Um, which sounds crazy to me. Um, but uh, as somebody who played Underlords first. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, Underlords, I'm currently boss rank, which is two levels below like the final like top rank that you can actually get to, um, mm -hmm. which is Lord of White Spire. So I'm boss there. And in between me and Lord of White Spire is big boss. Um, and... Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm doing all right. I've been I've played 253 hours <laughs> since oh, wow. it uh, yeah, since it launched. Ooh, yeah. Uh, I'm in in big oof mode um, for that <laughs> in terms of like hours played. I looked at that. I was like, uh, <laughs> that launched that's what? really uh, fast. A month and a half ago. <laughs> Something. It was like six <laughs> or eight weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, mm. yeah. It's so like. I can play it on mobile. That's another thing that I oh, love. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I was going to bring that up. I literally, like, I have the Alamo Draft House Season Pass, right? Which okay. is yeah. amazing. 20 bucks a month, and you get to play, like, literally, or play. You get to go to <laughs> literally a movie a day if you want. Like, fantastic. I'm very excited. I love it. I, I would. I would definitely go to the movies more if I had something like I that. I already have. I've uh, I've gone. Uh, I'm like right on week four of it, I think. Um, okay. And I've gone to three movies, none of which I would have gone to in the theaters. Yeah. Um, but each time, like I show, I always show up to the draft house like 30 minutes early to order food and stuff, um, and uh, you know just kind of get settled in. And I will play Underlords on my phone. <laughs> And in bed, I will play it on my iPad. Yeah. And it's just like, it's always there. If I want to play, I can play. Um, it's it's really nice. So, How long uh, do the games last in Underlords? <sighs> well, depending on when you get knocked out. Right. But if uh, in a good game, say you're top two or three. Yeah. I mean, if you go to the end, it's about 40 minutes. Okay. Yeah. That's similar in TFT. Yeah. That's one thing I'd like to see, like someone make a slightly streamlined one like yeah, get it down faster. to like 20 25 minutes yeah or maybe like a, a four player like mm. mod or something like uh instead of eight um underlords is uh introducing duos mode soon okay ish tm um which will maybe make that faster um i have no idea how that's gonna work uh and they haven't really said too much about it but um, yeah, looking forward to that. They are also going yeah. to introduce their like one of their key elements soon, which is the actual underlords themselves, which will have some sort of ability uh. and effect on the game. Um, like I think the idea is that you will pick an underlord to play as uh, okay. for so the like game, almost planeswalkery in Magic. Yeah, something like yeah, that. a little bit. Yeah. Um, okay, and you'll with that. Uh, Underlord, you'll have some sort of bonus ability or something like that. So, okay. um, yeah, the the devs have been super open and super fast with updates and tweaks and responding to the community and stuff like that. So uh, it's been really good. Um, they even during the international, they launched uh, a pretty beefy update. Like not in terms of like megabytes, but it was it made some pretty big changes to the meta. And they're already rolling back and adjusting okay, and, yeah. and stuff like that. So they're they're really open and uh, communicative uh, with what's going on there. So I'm definitely uh, happy with how Valve has been developing that. Yeah. The only thing that I really wish existed in the auto battler space is a Pokemon auto chess game. Yep. And I like immediately was like that would be the best possible thing. Like, yeah. th how good would that be? Like, that would be an easy, just an easy, I don't know, put it everywhere, Nintendo. <laughs> do it, do it now, put it on the Switch, put it on PC, put it on, phone. Put it on my iPad and my yeah. iPhone, and uh, I, 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 I would pay for that, like, legit. Yeah. I would give Nintendo the season pass money. The evolution's already there, like, right, leveling exactly, your characters, like, all that. Oh. Yeah, like, how cool Types. would that be? Oh man, what th that would be just so so interesting. That would be um, good. 
I actually yeah. saw a it was something about the origin of the auto battlers mm-hmm. and it it was an article that I just briefly clicked into but it was like the auto chess isn't the first auto battler it actually goes back to a Warcraft 3 mod which is where everything else everything, everything goes comes back from to, right uh, like that's where MOBAs or, come from and all Warcraft that three. Uh, so man. it was like it goes back to a Warcraft 3 mod that was actually Pokemon themed and it was your ev- evolving your Pokemon. Oh, that's and awesome. Your... <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, okay. So I've also been playing, uh, like, legit been playing Slay the Spire and Rocket League. Okay. Um, Slay the Spire is amazing. I think it might be the best roguelike or roguelite anybody has ever made. It's up there with the uh, okay. FTL for me um, in terms of, like, evergreen play. It's so yeah. good. Um, if you don't know what Slay the Spire is, you're basically, uh, it's a single player deck building game. Um, so you like, if you've ever played a deck building tabletop game, you know, kind of how it works, right? You, Mm -hmm. you have, uh, like a board of, uh, enemies and you have a deck of cards that you upgrade through your turns and stuff like that. Right. And the enemies change uh like each turn or they'll move to the next room depending on which one you're playing this basically you're climbing a spire you have a a randomized map that shows up you pick each level as you kind of climb up through the spire and uh there's three different characters you can play as right now i think they are introducing a fourth character at some point in the soon.tm um but uh yeah fantastic game super super good Tons of builds that you can play. Also, lots of mods if you get it on PC. Okay. Um, tons of mods. Like, I there's a mod that added uh, Yugi Moto as a uh, as a hero or as a playable <laughs> character. So, uh, yeah, super fun. I know that's on Switch now because I've it looked at getting it a couple times. It's worth it on Switch. Okay. Um, it runs a little okay. Um, like there's. Anytime your deck is shuffled, there's like some hitches and, and stuff like okay, that. But yeah. it's not terrible and it's great to have uh on the on the go, especially. Um I wouldn't play it on a TV, I don't think. Okay. Um, but it is good. It's it's uh yeah. if you don't have a PC option um and you want to get Slay the Spire, it, getting it on the Switch is totally fine. Um and it, it does have a uh, touch control on the Switch, oh, okay. which is yeah. uh pretty cool. That's always a nice inclusion there. Which means I hope it's coming to iPad. I hope it's coming oh, yeah. to like tablets and stuff. I'm so, sure. Like, why wouldn't you put it on mobile at this point? Yeah, uh, it's a small team though. So, yeah. um, I've been doing that. And Rocket there's League. similar games Super to shares. that. Sorry, but to the roguelike deck building, mm-hmm. there, there's like a handful because Steam World Quest came out from yeah. the Steam World Steam yeah. World universe, I guess. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of similar. And then Dicey Dungeons just came out like a week mm-hmm. or two ago. Um, I think that's one I'd want to jump in with into kind of getting used to that genre. Uh, it's, um, uh, there's also Deck of Ashes. Deck um, of Ashes is, okay. is another one that's in early access right now. Um, but yeah, SteamWorld uh, Quest. Quest is yeah. actually is really good. Like okay. don't, don't sleep on that. Um, that one is not quite, uh, it's not a deck building roguelike. Okay. Uh, it's a deck builder RPG. It's just campaign based. Okay. Yeah. Um, and each character has their own deck of cards. Okay. Um, and you like craft the cards. There's, uh, like you can't just get unlimited accounts of cards and stuff like that. So like they're a little balanced, but definitely an interesting game. Um, I really like it. Okay, I think that one's then. There's another game from uh, Clay, makers of Ooh. Don't Starve and uh, what's it Oxygen called? Not Oxygen not included. not included. Shank. Shank. Uh, yeah, man, they've they've made some bangers. They, their games are all it, super impressive. They're all yeah. deep. They're all really good looking. Yeah, and it's it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. and they are making Griftlands, which okay. I think is. It's a card. Uh, it's a single player. I think it might be a little bit more RPG, like mm-hmm. uh, so character based. But you're building your decks, but then you're also 
kind of card battling while conversing with other people in the world. So, like, the conversation system is based on, like, a kind of a deck build card that's really option interesting. system. And that's, I think that's only on Epic, but, you know. It's actually listed on Steam oh, it as is? June 2020. Okay. I think it's early access right now on, on Epic. On EGS, then. okay. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah. I, that one's probably the one I'm most looking forward to right now. I would, I'm definitely excited for that now. Um, <laughs> yeah, the... I've been playing Rocket League. Uh, Rocket Pass Classic. 3 is just ending. Rocket Pass 3 was really good, guys. Uh, they had challenges. Um, they had a really cool-looking car. They had some really cool-looking uh, skins and effects. Um, they are doing Rocket Pass 4. starts on Wednesday. So, um, How long do the passes last? The, so Rocket Pass 1 and 2 had like this weird downtime between them. Um, they didn't have challenges. Like they were still figuring out how they were going right. to do a pass. Um, Rocket Pass 3 was about three months, I think. Okay. So it launched before Epic officially had picked them up? Yes. Okay. It did. It launched Yeah, it launched quite a while before that. Uh, okay. It was kind of like the s- beginning of summer, like, school yeah. summer break right um not right. true summer so yeah kind of like summer season fall se- they're you know four seasons a year Maybe or something it was even like late april but they extended the the rocket pass three time period to go right up until rocket pass four launches okay um so rocket pass four starts on wednesday so start getting good with your uh, rocket cars guys um yeah but, uh, I mean, that was when they started introducing that. They were one of the ones that jumped on the like, okay, Fortnite's doing the past the way they're doing yeah. it, and like that's a really good way. It's way better than mm-hmm. now the loot box system. Like they're completely doing away with that. Mm-hmm. But I wonder, like with Rocket Pass Four, what kind of because now they're part of Epic and that's the first one they're launching with that. What right. kind of influence they'll have there, and if it'll be even better than yeah, we'll see. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Like I, I really enjoy playing Rocket League. Um and you know, like trying to get better. Like yeah. I'm still not very good, but I'm trying to get better and like be like actually conscious of how I'm playing the game. Every once in a while I get that spark of like, okay, I'm gonna jump in Rocket League mm-hmm. and I'm gonna realize how bad I am and then I'm gonna yeah. think, okay, I can get a little bit better and then <laughs> just I don't know. It's it, every once in a while. It's like, man, that looks really fun. Look at that. Can't be that hard. And then you're like, oh, the skill ceiling is that? miles above. <laughs> yeah, me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I, fe- I watched a video on YouTube that made me feel a whole lot better about myself. Uh, there was a, it was like a platinum player who had about like 200 hours in the game, which is like where I am ish in okay. Rocket League. I'm I'm almost to 300 now. It looks like actually. Um, but uh, it's called um. I think it's called three levels or three skill levels or something like that. Um, but it they basically had somebody in platinum record. Um, with platinum's like average uh, at this point, I think it's like uh, you go bronze, silver, gold, platinum, um, yeah. and platinum okay. is like where you probably land when you have a comfortable and like natural feel for your car but your game sense maybe isn't the best then they showed a champ 2 which is like the platinum i think it was like platinum diamond champ and then like grand champ maybe i don't know all the rocket league ranks i'm just like there's, there's i want to get nine to diamond one i would love yeah. that um that's like me and tft right now diamond one is the first <laughs> level of diamond and i've been platinum three for a long time um so i'm like trying to like get just that little bit better uh but uh yeah that's that's one one game that i'm like like i i did that same kind of thing whereas like every few months i would get that that itch and i boot it up and i'd play for a couple of weeks and then i'd put it down you know yeah um and this time it just for whatever reason it just hooked me it might have been the rocket pass it might have been that i started to actually feel like i was getting better at it but uh it's solid um nice. it's, it's been, been really nice then there's like all the tons of other games that i've been like buying and playing like five minutes of and <sighs> yeah. then going man this isn't underlords why am i oh I let's go play underlords it's just so 
It's so it's easy. An addiction. It, it, it fits like, that, that that classic multiplayer thing of like, okay, I can jump in for a round, but mm-hmm. then a round's nearly an hour, yeah. and then you're like, oh crap! Like yeah. here I am. Like I'll I guess play a I'm round going before again. I go to bed. Yeah. Oh crap! I got knocked out in third place. That was close. That was a good build. Let's do it again. Let's go again. Yeah. Uh, let's and go then again. it's seven in the morning, and you're like, uh, I guess I'm yeah. going to work. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So that's good. Um, should we talk about some of the news? Oh yeah. Let's let's talk about that news. Okay. Um, what happened first? I think actually chronologically, this is kind of this lineup is pretty this, good. Yeah, this lineup so. is pretty good. The first day, Monday, I guess, Monday last week, okay. uh, it was announced that Sony is purchasing Insomniac Games. And you might know Insomniac as recently makers of Marvel Spider Man, mm-hmm. previously Ratchet and Clank. Although they're um, lots of them. Biggest game franchise ever, obviously, Resistance. Yeah. And then Resistance, their their FPS entry that uh, carried in the PS2 era, right? PS3. Was it PS3 yeah, yeah, era? Yeah, it was a PS3 okay, launch. It was a launch the first title. Resistance game was a PS3 launch game. Uh, still holds up, in my opinion. Very good. If you have a PS3, track that down. Uh, I, I It might be on PlayStation now. I know Resistance 3 is, but uh, the the first, the like that whole trilogy is just so good. If you haven't I, played it. It's briefly really played good. multiplayer on one of them and was like, all right, this is cool yeah. back in the day. But yeah, was... that would have been two or three. I don't think, or maybe it was one or two. I had an Xbox 360 at the time, I think, mm-hmm. and a uh, Wii. I didn't oh, have a yeah. PS3 at the time. <laughs> so I was like, I'm playing Halo. This I isn't Halo. I'm playing Red Steel. Uh, okay. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, God. Wow. What a disappointing game. Um, that game was all right, okay? It was all, it was all <laughs> it right. It was kind of cool. <laughs> it looked way better than it actually felt to play. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. All of the motion control yeah. stuff did, tended to. Yeah. Oof. Man, they were really good at showing, at, at like, demoing that, and then it <laughs> never played well. <laughs> Looking at you, Zelda Skyward Sword. I, Skyward Sword, oh, yeah. Man. I never finished that game. I, Neither did I terrible zelda game i picked it back up like not that long ago well before okay not that long ago before the switch came out Mm -hmm. at some point i started playing that again and i just never i made it really far too i think i was probably one or two dungeons from the end and i just didn't finish it (laughs) i I mean i forgot about it i didn't feel like it was compelling uh at the beginning Anyway, let's uh, not talk about how bad other things are. Okay. Is Sony okay. buying Insomniac is great, right? Like, yeah, I mean, man. finally. They've been making Sony games except for Sunset Overdrive <laughs> for right. literally the entire time. Yeah, it, and they've been doing, they have been doing a bunch of VR games for uh, Oculus Rift, um, and uh, I don't know how those have been received or how they've sold or whatever, if they're good. I mean, they're VR games, so they're probably yeah. like, good to very good uh most yeah i, VR I always games have a tough time with that. vr like i'm not in the vr space so it's it's tough to say either way you have to ask like brace i know brace like yeah playing around a, with it i have a playstation vr um okay and well, you yeah. know that really is just a beat saber vr headset uh, at yeah, this point that's fair um Although Super Hot VR, I, I would argue that Super Hot VR and uh, Beat Saber are the killer apps for VR, and I think they are mm-hmm. legit killer apps. They are so good and so fun. Um, yeah, I think Beat Saber definitely, at least, as it's exclusive to there too, right? For right now, I don't uh, know if it's Beat Saber is Beat Saber was on Steam VR. Um, okay, first. so it's exclusive to a VR experience right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I and it wouldn't work without VR, honestly. It wouldn't as like I, a yeah. like Guitar Hero style thing. Yeah, like because it, it uses like the height of the headset, like because mm-hmm. um, you have to like there's there's points right, where you have to ducking. dodge uh like bi- just big old walls of death, um that that'll just destroy you so you're like yeah, leaning just back like and physically forth thinking. and ducking and stuff like it's it's really cool um and definitely a workout and a lot of fun uh like that and super hot vr which is perfect 
like it mm. it's it's so flawless like you even in playstation vr which is not room scale vr it feels like it's room scale vr like i there were levels in that where i was like literally like sitting down on the ground to avoid bullets coming in and stuff and like <laughs> rolling around like it's it's really good and that's, it's easy to get good. lost in you it just like standing there with your yeah <laughs> it's and your it's great um definitely recommend that uh if you have a vr headset it's on steam and uh and on playstation vr so that, that those are my killer VR apps at this point. But yeah. Sony buying them, buying Insomniac, who's made some VR games, maybe that means we're getting uh, some sort of cool PlayStation VR uh, Insomniac game. Or yeah. uh, maybe just that means we're confirming 300 more Spider-Man games for... Right. I mean, I think the, that one's for the PlayStation easy... PlayStation 5, yeah. Like, easy, obvious cool. route is Spider-Man. And then they also made... Uh, they also made the game Song of the Deep, I think, that was they published did. by GameStop right. Publishing. Man, that lasted. Um. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't, they made a, a, you know, they have a wide breadth of. <laughs> that was like a Metroidvania style game. Um, I think you were a submarine. Yeah. And some like well, Norse. You were a, I Norse you were mythology. a diver. I did. I played through that. Um, you were a diver. And you, I think you had a submarine, okay. Um, and it, like you could leave the submarine for certain like exploration areas, but yeah, it was it was a solid Metroidvania, um, really pretty, um, kind of uh, melancholy tone to it. Um, I definitely would recommend um, checking that out if you like Metroidvania games um, specifically. So. Um, but yeah, also, can we please get more Ratchet and Clank, like? Yeah, I mean, I think that's also going to happen. Like, like, the the remake, like, the actual remake that they launched in 2016 was so good. Uh, like, as far as PlayStation mascots go, I feel like Ratchet and Clank really yeah. is, is, you know, like, if they, like, yeah. Crash, I feel like Crash never really <laughs> felt, yeah, Crash, like, recently. Uh, recently, like, until the, the remaster um, or remake whatever that actually is um crash crash was ps1 like hardcore yeah. like crash yeah. was sony commercials um but uh crash was but crash really good. got like beat by sonic basically yeah crash, <laughs> you know, crash sonic sure. got beat by mario yeah and <laughs> so. in terms of like mind share for sure yeah uh quality of game uh definitely right in the middle of that pack but um yeah like we also had like <laughs> Man, PS One had had the mascots, right? Like we had. Yeah, they must have just Crash tried Bandicoot. All we had Ratchet and Clank. Well, Ratchet and Clank, I guess, was PS Two, but we had Spyro the Dragon. Spyro, like, yeah, he was man, a good one. Those are yeah. those early PlayStation mascots. They were mascots, and there was Croc. He never took off. Oh my gosh, I don't Croc, understand yeah. why. <laughs> uh, we had there were so many Gex the Gecko. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, Gex. Man, those, Gex might have also been on N64. I think it was. Um, yeah. But, man, that was the era of... Uh, Sly Cooper, that, oh, that man, era. Sly, that was PS2, but yeah. That was PS2? That okay. was... Uh, that's Sucker Punch, man. That, those are good games. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm really excited to see what, yeah. uh, what we get from Insomniac um, with... I mean, they've been basically giant indie for a while right um yeah. and been making triple a indie games um and now we'll get triple a or quadruple a yeah, just uh, full-on sony budget games yeah. so you'll get uncharted or last of us spider-man yeah like <laughs> maybe they'll just cut the mary jane crap out of the next spider-man games <laughs> and we'll, you didn't like that i, I, I don't oh know my i gosh. thought those they, sequences they used were well. so bad the like her character was fine the story beats were fine the actual gameplay where they make you play as mj was so bad <laughs> it's so bad uh i mean it would have been game of the year if god of war hadn't come out but uh, that's true god of war came out so <laughs> i think i think i've recommended spider-man or thought about spider-man more than God of War mm -hmm. since I think part of that it. is Spider-Man was like six months later and mm -hmm. had the DLC that's true. That, that came out 
um, afterwards to kind of give it more of a tail. But uh, God of War is hands down the better game there for sure. Yeah, like when I, yeah, when I got into God of War. And I was like, okay. When I wish somebody told me it was a 3D Zelda game. Like, if somebody had said that, it, yeah. it would have been like, yeah. oh, this is really awesome. I'm jumping in right away. Like, yeah, no it's one did. Such a, it really is. Like they they kind of went like that half step from God of War to Zelda um, with yeah. that camera shift and the way that you explored the world and stuff. Like, man, what a good game. Yeah, it was, that was Great a really game. good one. Yeah. Um, so anyway, next story, Gamescom happened. I mean, that was yeah. part of Gamescom, I guess, technically, kind of. I think it happened right around the same time Gamescom was kicking off. Yeah, so I didn't watch Gamescom, like, at all. Didn't really follow it. Catch me up. All right. Uh, so we got the Gamescom roundup rundown, I guess I'd call it. Okay. Um, let's see. Nintendo ran an indie uh, direct video. Which nope. was good, you know, it's like mm-hmm. 20, 30 minutes, something like that, and they wow. pack them all in. Hotline Miami came out on Switch finally. Right. Um, okay. Great some game. other, or, Ori from Microsoft nice. is coming to Switch, so that's a pretty cool inclusion there. So, you know, Nintendo and Microsoft are still Have friendly. a good relationship, yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess Google did a Stadia Connect, I think is what they call it. I didn't watch it. I uh, heard people yeah. that did watch it were like, what is Google doing? Yeah, I listened <laughs> to a Kind of Funny Games Daily for the first time in a very long time. Like, I'd, I've fallen off of the, the podcast train for a while. Like, I just, I can't keep up with everything. Um, but yeah, I think I, I heard that, like, it basically felt like a an early 2010, kind of like 2010 to 2014 kind of, E3 type event okay. where it was like they spent way too much time going into way too much detail about way too many things that we already knew. Uh, yeah. So my struggle with the Stadia is like, who is your audience? Because it's not the audience for Stadia isn't people that are already gaming regularly. Right. right? You're not going to sell somebody who has a console or a capable PC or something they even stream to their living room or whatever, this gaming platform. Mm-hmm. You're you're looking for people that like, you know, okay, it's basically a TV remote, but it's a controller I pick up and I turn on the games channel, right? That right. idea. <laughs> like who so stop marketing it to gamers because I don't think that's your actual audience. Yeah. And <laughs> well and I don't know who they're gonna hit with that either. Like it's right. it's so weird. Like you're not targeting people who don't have great internet like also like that, that's yeah. really the big thing like if you don't have great internet there's going to be some in- input lag that's probably going to be noticeable um and like if you if you're somebody who buys like google stadia and like whatever it, their console is or whatever it looks like 130 bucks gets you a Chromecast. Yeah, a Chromecast and a, a controller. controller. And three months of their service. Right. Uh, like, okay. Yeah. So this is just happening through a, a Chromecast, um, which, sure, maybe that's fine. But, like, if you start playing games and, like, really get into it, are you going to stick on the, Stadia, on the Stadia subscription service? Right. Or, like, I can't see anybody who really starts to get into it like even if they get into it not like to like build your own pc kind of level but like just to, yeah i'll yeah, they're gonna buy a console a flat four hundred dollars at this point for a what you know for a next for box a, <laughs> yeah for whatever pro- for scarlet that one it is yeah it is scarlet right uh, yeah project scarlet yeah this yeah scorpio was the one x cool mm. um yeah so stadia yeah. we'll see it's coming we'll out see. soon yeah. I think it'll kind of, I don't know, it'll flounder around for a bit. It'll happen. I don't know how long it'll... Will it be as successful, less successful than, or more successful than the Ouya? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, more successful in in like the long term, I think, but in the short term, right? The Ouya came onto the scene with their Kickstarter and people bought it, right? They funded it. Yeah. It it happened. 
and it wouldn't have without that. So yeah. I think that like that had a spark, right? That initial launch. Mm-hmm. But I don't think Stadia. I think Stadia will be like, oh, that's still around two years from now, and yeah. suddenly they've they've got something going, <laughs> and it's like appealing and yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe maybe they're playing the long game for for that uh, that internet rollout that's never gonna happen. Right. And that's the other thing is like their <laughs> their competition I think is Apple, right? Apple's trying their gaming thing a little bit. They're starting to push that. Well Apple is launching the Apple arcade service yeah. uh sometime this fall. Um I, I don't think there's any news uh on let's see, Apple Arcade uh on the pricing or anything like that. Mm. But um th- Apple Arcade, uh, if you didn't know, Apple TV and like iPhone and iPad, like iOS and tvOS, and even macOS to some extent, uh, they have some pretty uh, legit games. Like you can play, um, like I was scrolling through my Apple TV games. You can play, like Crypt of the Necrodancer is on Apple TV. Okay. Uh, I think Bioshock is on Apple TV. Bioshock is on iOS, which, okay, wow. Um, but uh yeah there's some legit like actual console games on uh on apple tv and on ios the apple tv 4k is actually pretty solid okay what do you use do they have a controller or do you just use a bluetooth controller or you can use a, a bluetooth controller the uh basically right now you have to have an mfi or made for iphone uh supported controller um hmm. to, to use yeah. it but with uh ios 13 and tvOS 13 uh this fall they are supporting both the dualshock 4 and the xbox one controller via bluetooth um so you'd be you'll be able to pair one of those controllers without any what about my issue. 8-bit do that's a really good question I, I have a i have that exact same controller yeah um, i love this thing it's, it's great fantastic for uh, all sorts it's, of stuff it's so good for everything um i'd be surprised uh if if it supports that i i mean i also wouldn't yeah. be surprised but um we'll see 8-bit do has been a little weird about their ios support okay. um recently so uh, maybe with that support it'll just work um but we'll see yeah i I mean apple arcade it looks looks pretty cool it's uh i don't think it's a streaming service either so okay i think it's going to be a download the game and uh you know if you've got your subscription you're you're good to go so all right um what else happened xbox microsoft did one of their you know inside xbox events um i heard they showed off some uh gears 5 which okay, Gears that's 5 got coming gameplay. in like September. Like that's a few weeks away, yeah. right? Oh my gosh! Wow. I don't know because September like, yeah, they... six. That's like two weeks away. That's that's not far. Okay. That is wow. That is not even two weeks. That's a week and a half huh. from r- recording. From from yeah. So by the time you hear this, it's even sooner. I think it's Friday. Yeah, I think this goes up Friday. All right, so it'll be a week from when you hear this if you listen <laughs> to it day one, Yuri. Uh, holy crap! Wow, I didn't realize that was so close. I'm looking forward yeah. to playing through that tr- through that story. Um, and playing some Horde mode. Uh, I, Xbox I Game haven't Pass. played a Gears in probably a decade <laughs> at this point. Man, not is it, really. Is that not really a that decade. Old? uh in okay when seven did, years okay <laughs> when so seven years ago the gear the first gears of war came out no no when did that, the first gears of war come out uh probably in 2006 or 7 2006 maybe i would guess 2006 november nailed 7 it. 2006 yes. you nailed it you win you are now the host of this podcast permanently all right um I've way to take it Bryce too yeah, Take you it are now over. Um, <laughs> and it, okay. Dice. What a, uh, what dice. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah. All right. So inside Xbox, they let's see new Xbox Game Pass titles. Devil May Cry Five was uh, launched okay. on oh, right. Game Pass. There are a couple of Game Pass entries uh, there. DMC was the other one is amazing. That was my game of the year. So my game of the year this year was basically 
it went like in big <laughs> releases. It was uh, Resident Evil 2. I was like, okay. this is game of the year material. This is so good. Fantastic game. Um, it's like exactly the kind of Resident Evil that I love, which is Resident Evil 4. Um, but uh, like that came out. I was like, this is fantastic. I love it. And then Devil May Cry 5 came out. I was like, oh, this is the best Devil May Cry game. Like, that was so this year. Good. Yeah. That was in February. So wow. Resident Evil that feels was like an eternity. January. Devil May yeah. Cry was February. And then in March, <laughs> Sekiro Shadows Die okay, Twice Sekiro. came out. That is still my game of the year. Hands down. So good. What a masterclass in role playing and action games. It's so good. I'm trying to figure out what I played this year. <laughs> like going yeah. back at, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, so many games have come out this year. Lots of great games have come out this year, too. Um, but, yeah, Game Pass, if you don't have it, get it, because it's the best deal in gaming right now, especially Ultimate. Like, you get early access to their upcoming games. It's you use it uh, with PC stuff? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I actually use it on both. Um, so the, the PC stuff is actually pretty compelling, too. Okay. Uh, they've, they've got a great list of titles there. I was waiting for uh, Game Pass to get you know, better PC offering basically. Mm -hmm. And I think they've, cause they announced at E3, right? Like here's, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're doing, we're going all in with it on PC as well. Um, and then I was thinking, okay, let me take this one step further. I want like a family plan option where I can have multiple accounts on game pass. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like holding out for that, I guess. I, don't know. I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's such a good deal though. Like, what it's fifteen dollars a month or something like that. You can get yeah. right. It looks like you can get two months for two dollars. That's a great deal uh, for Game Pass Ultimate because um, that's Game Pass for Xbox, Game Pass for PC, and Xbox Live Gold um, okay. all in one. So yeah, that's that's some good stuff right there. Um, but yeah, what that, else I mean, happened at Gamescom? Let's see. We've hit the uh xbox we've hit stadia, stadia connect nintendo indies uh nintendo indies gamescom opening night live i guess uh october for witcher 3 death stranding got new gameplay i don't need to see any more of that um, death stranding is that that was like a big part of the opening night live that was like the um, last hour of it yeah. was a Jeff Keighley slash Kojima hype reel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then bringing him out on stage. Uh, and then he, he kind of described what the game was a little bit through a couple of like the cutscenes mm. of just, okay, what is a BT? What is a BB? Mm. What is happening? You're walking from right to left. Right. Instead of left to right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, that's interesting. But, uh, yeah, I I'm really excited for whatever that game is. Like <laughs> I my my current thought process on that game is cuz a lot of people are very excited for it. A lot of people you know there's there's no way it's a bad game. Mm. But there's also no way it's a good game. I don't like, like what is it? I don't know. I was <laughs> like is this a ladder laying simulator or uh, uh are, is this male pregnancy? Um <laughs> like what is this? No, it, like every bit of it I saw was like I have no idea what this is and I'm totally intrigued. Like and that's yeah, kind yeah. of like I wish it was a movie, I, I guess. I don't know. I guess I like <laughs> we'll see. I, I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm excited to play it. Yeah. I'm going to it, play it'll it. It'll be highly regarded by, you know, some. I'm sure, core I'm sure somebody's going to play anyway. it and be like, this is the greatest thing I've ever played. I, <laughs> exactly. I kind of like it's Kojima. So we know it's going to yeah. be weird and crazy and convoluted. And that's great. If that's what you want, that game is yeah. going to be. I think that game's going to hit what Kojima fans want. Right, um, so. and I feel like the last three years for him, like thinking he's explaining the game, but because he, he's super familiar with all the concepts, yeah. he's thought them all up. He has, yeah. you know, it all in his head yeah. of like this is what's going on, this is the story, and then like previewing things to us, and it's yeah. just everyone's just like, okay, like uh -huh. what, what okay. do you? What are yeah, you doing plus, here? Yeah, plus, see, like, English is not his native language, so we're also, like, kind of getting the translated version of everything, and I, 
you know, whatever. It, it looks crazy. I'm excited um, to play it and to find out for myself what it is, but I don't need to see any more of it. Um, let's see. Other notable quick things from Gamescom, Kerbal Space Program 2 announced. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. I'm curious to see what they're going to do with that, because like, you can go to a different solar system in the first one, can't you? I never made it that far. I made it to the Mun. I never made it back from the Mun. I, I barely made it out of the atmosphere, so... Uh. <laughs> I don't know if there was other... There, I think there was one other planet outside of the solar system okay. um, that you could visit, but you could build a Voyager ship, basically, mm. and travel to, mm. and land on all the planets. That okay. was, like, kind of the big endgame thing, and then building... You know, it's cool. a full... It's a full physics sim. Yeah. And I mean, I had a lot of fun with it. I just yeah. like it for me. It was mostly like a blow up some rockets. Right. Kind of right. Thing, like some simulator. Stuff up, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, and they've been they've been acquired by 2K, I think. Oh, have uh, they? since since the last, you know, since they released. Mm, OK. So, or maybe maybe just the brand of Kerbal did, but I don't know. It'll okay. it'll be it'll have publishing a publisher backing it this okay. time. So that's cool. It'll probably be a little bigger budget, a little bit more polished. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Um, Need for Speed Heat. <sighs> I don't know. Are you into it? I, mm, no, I <laughs> <laughs> I am, and I'm not. Like okay, n- it, Need for Speed has been hit or miss since like the PS4 generation really since the PS3 generation really yeah like Burnout Paradise came out and no need for speed game since then has been as good as Burnout Paradise was that's fair uh, in yeah. terms of those that arcade racer right right, right. Um, and even like Forza Horizon now does yeah. that and well Forza, yeah Forza Horizon I, argue, I would Accept an argument from somebody that says Forza Horizon 4 is better than Burnout Paradise, but I, I don't think it is, personally, for me. Um, but, uh, like, yeah, those Forza... When the, the uh, technology <laughs> behind the, what really, at this point now, is the best simulator racing game gets yeah. used to make this cool, crazy, open-world driving game... And then they just keep iterating on that. Like Playground Games has done an insanely good job with that. And uh, like, honestly, Horizon, the Horizon franchise specifically, is something I always look forward to their launches. So, um, and I play the crap out of all of them for like a month and a half after they come out. So, um, great games. And I, I just I can't see Need for Speed taking any of that mind share back. Like. This isn't all PS2. Like from them, yeah, right. Okay, that's all I want from them. Too. Is I want Underground, like right. legitimately Underground, Underground Two, and Carbon were yeah. oh, that Carbon was, was great. that run was yeah. it for Need for Speed. That's when it peaked, and that was like also with Fast and the Furious. It was like yeah, in that same vein, in that mm-hmm. same time period. So if they could capture yeah, that, that was in the zeitgeist, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, if they could capture that tuner racing street racing thing absolutely which i think they want to clearly from from you know setting it in miami or Uh whatever you know fake miami and Mm -hmm. making it about neon and yeah street racing at night is a great idea um a need for speed rivals was very good um need for speed the on ps4 and xbox one need for speed rivals was very good i think the one that there was one that came after that, uh, like another Hot Pursuit. Okay. Oh, no, it was right before that. Need for Speed Most Wanted uh, okay, most was wanted. was like their, uh, an open world. Um, was that the one that came out two years ago? No, that came out in 2012. Um, okay. It was developed by Criterion, and it felt a lot like... Um, uh, it felt a lot like Burnout Paradise, but still wasn't quite as good as Burnout Paradise. Uh, two years ago was Payback. Payback. Okay, that one did not go well. No. <laughs> no, it did not. Um, I guess this one features like a day-night cycle, and you're you're doing like you know above the board type racing during the day, um, and underground racing at night, and underground street racing at night, and <laughs> the cops are like way you know. 
I guess dying light style with zombies. Okay. <laughs> of like, you know, the cops are like gonna get you at yeah. night and during I'll the day they'll it's leave on, you alone. Uh, like origin access or something to yeah. play it. Honestly, like I can't see my well, I guess it'll probably it'll be on Origin Access Premiere when it launches, so go for subscription services. Um <laughs> making me feel less bad about playing bad games. Uh yeah. Anyway, I think that's uh, like that's most of the that's like a lot of the big stuff. stuff. There's there's some other good stuff out of Gamescom worth mm-hmm. worth looking into. Like a couple games released at that time. Um, yeah. There's gameplay for a lot of games that hadn't had gameplay before. Mm-hmm. It's kind of weird hangover E3, but probably might be more like E3 in the future when mm-hmm. if E3 dies. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, respawns or respawn not respawn remedy games new game is coming control. out control that comes out next week i think comes out in or two days two days okay so by the time this airs you you can play control you will probably have played it if you care uh, that game looks great i'm excited um yeah there were there was some sad news that came out of uh, uh around the gamescom time which yeah, was gamestop laying off over 120 people um, yeah so which a lot of people are saying that it's the latest sign that they're struggling. I don't know if that's in like totally true. Like from what I've read, most of GameStop uh, Game of, uh, most of the GameStop retail stores are cash positive. Like that's they're are they? Yeah, huh. which is great. Like this is them cutting things down game informer is uh game informer got a lot of cuts. Um yeah, I which think. apparently also game informer has done well. Yeah, Game Informer makes good content. It's really it, sad they to do see make them. really they do they, they, they do make really good news content mm-hmm. and editorial mm-hmm. content. Um, um but yeah. yeah, uh hopefully everybody lands on their feet. Um I always hate to see that, but that is kind of the nature of uh games media. It seems at this point if you're not yeah. big or you're not a small independent group, um you you're, you might be running into some trouble right now so hopefully yeah. uh everybody lands on their feet and they're doing really well i think a lot of the gamestop stuff comes specifically from like the business stock side of like okay mm-hmm. you know we're we're cutting costs or whatever is like right they're they're hoping to improve their their yeah. stock they're a publicly and, traded company so yeah. uh i mean it makes sense uh that they are they are beholden to stockholders so um and i mean they're uh, as a business, they got to do what a business got to do, you know? Um, <laughs> Put a some, fedora on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, get some cement blocks. Say, hey, Teddy. <laughs> I think the GameStop is going to be okay. I think they're going to pivot in uh, in a really uh, important way for them. Um, and who knows? Maybe it'll just be Think Geek stores in the future. And uh, we'll have really cool ways to get cool stuff. Yeah. I don't know why they they have separate Think Geek stores, which I think mm-hmm. came pre pre GameStop buying right. them out or buying acquiring mm-hmm. Think Geek. So then you have like sometimes in a mall there's a GameStop and a Think Geek store, and yeah. you're like, what? It, they're basically the same store at this point. Yeah. Well, what are you doing? <laughs> we have a uh, GameStop that is really big, uh, attached to a Barnes and Noble. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and it's this giant standalone building here. Huh. Like, I look, I don't know how it's still there. I drove past it the other day. I was like, wait, that's really <laughs> both of people those are, are still... buying books and okay, physical like, games. That's fine. People are buying books and physical games, and I guess some cool memorabilia. <laughs> Pop up a little like Amazon yeah. tablet store. All right, <laughs> like... that'll put them right out. <laughs> Just some of the, the Amazon kiosks that you walk yeah. by in the mall and go, man, that looks weird. But okay. Uh, <laughs> I guess I need a smart outlet. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, we'll see. I mean, they're still open. So yeah, they're still and open. They're in, I mean, right. They have Think Geek. They had game publishing. I don't know if they still do right now. Yeah. Um, they have Game Informer. So like mm. they're, they're not just a game, game store. Yeah, and uh, they they're I think a lot stronger than a lot of people. A lot of gamers want to admit. Um, mm, I think a lot okay. of gamers want 
Yeah, it kind of like have this weird chip on their shoulder about GameStop being like, yeah. oh, they'll only give you three cents for your 17 year old game that's scratched and doesn't have the original what do you mean case. Madden like, 10 is only worth 10 oh, cents. Duh. Madden 10 was only worth 10 cents when Madden 11 came out. So <laughs> get over it. Uh, <laughs> like, that's how sports games go, guys. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we'll see what's going on there. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, PlayStation 5 leaked some stuff. Have you seen this? The PlayStation 5 leaks? I, yeah, a lot of this news I haven't seen because I've been playing Dota Underlords. And it's all news to you. Yeah, it's all news to me. <laughs> so I guess there was a patent image. Is that is that the right terminology for it? Yeah, there's a patent uh, with a diagram. Diagram of... It's kind of a wireframe looking sketch of a piece of hardware that looks vaguely like bu- binoculars out of star wars yeah like uh, it's got all sorts of ribs and ridges and mm-hmm. fan vent looking I things like, it looks like it is ribbed for my pleasure so uh, <laughs> yeah. playstation 5 the games inside you <laughs> yeah the games inside you oh man oh man <laughs> <laughs> uh there's there's not much to say other than that that's out there people are people love i don't know talking about next gen hardware we got scarlet on the way ps5's yeah, on the way people love it's, speculating and good on them speculation is fun it looks like yeah something you'd hold up to your face though and have like a scanner and you're looking mm-hmm. on hoth yeah um so it does have a disk drive disk drive is awesome uh, um, lots of fans, lots of vents. So, uh, yeah, that hopefully loud. they're quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they're quiet fans, because <laughs> uh, I mean, my uh, 747, I mean PS4 Pro is crazy loud, uh, and they really they just need to vent it better, and it'll be okay. Um, oh, the one thing they're speculating here is there's a giant V shape in the middle for mm-hmm. five. I didn't get that uh, one just looking at it before. Uh, oh, look at uh, that. It's a V. Uh, I like that this article says sleek new design. That does not look sleek. No, not it looks, at all. It looks like, uh, I don't know, what, what South Park would have imagined. Yeah, like, like the next game console in 2004. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but. Yeah, we'll probably see an actual announcement. I I would bet you this time next year we know release dates for both Scarlet I, and I PlayStation Five by E three time. Yeah, they'll have announced a release and probably price point. Yeah, I can't imagine they go over five hundred. I would bet you we hit four hundred. Um, for base I don't versions, know if Microsoft. But- Microsoft might just be like, here's a couple options. You know, here's yeah. the streaming option that's almost not, not a, un, uh, almost like you can't not afford it. Like yeah. it's 200 bucks or something and it's just streams. And then here's the $700 version that's a PC. Yeah. I wonder if they'll do like just drop the Xbox One X and be like, the Xbox One X is $400 and it will play all of these games, but Scarlet will play all of these games better like, right m- maybe that's what they do and, and put scarlet at 500 i don't think you can launch i think sony taught us that you can't launch a console at 600 dollars. Yeah. so um yeah yeah we'll see um i i think 400 is going to be the the ideal price point for for each of these new consoles if we don't have like some sort of xbox one x scarlet like merging of the xbox brand right yeah i do think there's a market for like that that low-end pc like if you could guarantee it's it's slightly better than a low-end pc at like Mm -hmm. like a capable low-end pc right around a thousand dollars right where that sits if you could get something in the high hundreds price point that can hit that dollars is definitely a mid-range PC. <laughs> That's a mid-range PC? Okay. Oh, yeah. So Especially I guess with the... something that can play at like good specs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, they're targeting with Scarlet, they're targeting 4K uh, and 60 FPS, which is like, you need a good rig. You need, basically, you need a 2080 Ti and yeah. some form of i7 from the last 
couple of years to like reliably hit that um like an eighth or ninth gen i said or yeah, well yeah. I, so i have a a sixth gen i have a 6700 i7 okay. in my gaming rig and i can do i can you do can 4K, do 4k 60 with okay. my 2080 ta um <laughs> but uh you know just flex that pc uh <laughs> but um yeah b- basically in the 14 nanometer uh i7s or newer what's a low-end gaming pc at that point then like 800 I mean, I mean, 700 you can, you can build a an entry-level gaming pc for probably about five to six hundred dollars um depending on how deal hungry you are mm. um you could probably get into a uh pc that hits probably not let's 4K say 60 but you're trying uh, to run 1080 60 uh overwatch I mean, if you're if you're like targeting that. 1080 60 Overwatch, you could probably spend four hundred dollars and hit that. You um, think so? Over, okay. Overwatch specifically is very well optimized, but if you want like most things PUBG, to be like, let's say, <laughs> let's say, let's target fourteen forty sixty, right? Like okay. if you want to do fourteen forty sixty, you can get uh, an RTX twenty sixty for fairly cheap. You could buy a GTX sixteen sixty uh, Ti, which uh, would do that as well. Um, without much headache, the new AMD uh, CPUs are really, really good, really price efficient. Um, you could get like a, a Ryzen 5 3600, I think is what they're called. Yeah, 3600. Um, and probably build something for, yeah, like five, six hundred dollars, um, depending on how deal hunty crazy you are. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, it. it's not crazy expensive to build a pc um nowadays so it's always nice yeah uh, to to see that come down but yeah i mean we're talking a, a year from now that hardware it, we're getting those new uh amd cpus um the mm-hmm. amd chipsets uh based yeah, on all their the new Ryzen, run off of that. uh architecture and their new navi gpu uh set up so uh hopefully um, these new consoles are are really efficient um, in terms of price and power, um, and I think they will. Like AMD made huge leaps and bounds in the PC space this year. Um, so, uh, if that's any indication, uh, AMD is pushing Intel to to make some better things and uh, pushing Nvidia to make some better things and price their things a lot better. Um, but yeah, yeah we'll that's see. that's nice because like yeah yeah. For a long time, right? Intel's just sat there with. Yeah. I mean, they they're still like what seventy percent at least of yeah, the market. In, Intel still has a huge chunk of the market, but um, yeah, the, we're totally off topic on these yeah, new consoles. No. That's here. PS Five. New consoles are coming next year. Yeah, this one looks like it looks like a V on a <laughs> set of Star Wars binoculars. Yeah, it looks like some sort of sci-fi show tech. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, the last news story. I was hoping you w- would be able to enlighten me oh, a little man. bit Let about this. Let me tell this, you all about the I saw international. You, I I know you love Dota. I it's specifically I, the Underlords variety. I sp- I you know, let me tell you all about the international. It's basically <laughs> a competition between five different countries and Saturn. Um and everybody Is it actually between five countries? No, I have no, I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Uh <laughs> um it's a Dota 2 tournament. It's huge. Apparently OG the, this team. Uh yeah. OG are the international winners. And it looks like they're back to back winners, according to this article. Fifteen million dollars in prize money went to them. So that's that's crazy. Um I like Esports are a thing. Yeah, that that guy that or that team made more than the kid that won Fortnite. Yeah, I mean, break that up between five people, I guess. But yeah. Uh, oh, I guess he won. They won the same amount as the kid yeah. that won Fortnite. Yeah. Um, but and you know who knows where like they might have a coach or whatever. Like apparently there's people that do that. But that's crazy. That's a lot of money in a single gaming tournament. So, um, that's awesome. The TI, yeah, is kind of the, I mean, it has been the biggest, I think, esports, single esports, like Super Bowl Event. equivalent, yeah. uh, right, of gaming. Yeah. Um, everyone kind of knows of it, even if you don't follow it or play right. Dota even, like, it, it's around. <laughs> I, I mostly know the TI from 
uh, Lyric, Giant Waffle, and Shorty Guys night streams, and they right. when they play each other, they call the final <laughs> round the TI, and that's like how I first learned what that's it was. Funny. Uh, <laughs> that's really funny. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess uh, we'll see. Um, I guess they've got a trophy called the Aegis. Uh, yeah. That's kind of cool. Like having your names inscribed on that. That's like the Stanley Cup, which uh, guys, hockey is like a month away. I'm so excited. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Don't get me hockey, started. Hockey and basketball. Why? Why you got to run your season at the from same time? October yeah. through June <laughs> or whatever. So painful. I like July is okay because we've got the draft and free agency, but like August, August is so painful. August shit posting on r slash hockey is uh, it's great. But it's also so painful because I just want hockey, man. Just want it to be back. I live in New England, so mm. I'm mostly, you know, I follow the Patriots pretty mm. heavily. Mm-hmm. Everything else, I mean, you know, the Bruins blew it. I they, live in Colorado, so I'm supposed to hate you. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you know, you guys got Joe Flacco now, so. I <laughs> I don't know who that is because I don't watch <laughs> I, football at all. I have a soft spot for Joe Flacco. I like him. Yeah. I I mean, from what I remember, he was def- like a pretty legit nice dude and stuff. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> topic of the show, <laughs> sports, man. Hockey needs to get here soon. That Hockey's like the <laughs> Let's only. Let's talk sports. This is yeah. now a sports podcast. <laughs> the Ready, number set. One sports, Scott. Ready, set, sports. Let's sports do that hockey. Um, cast. <laughs> Ready, set, sport, cast. Yeah. I'm going to do this part real do quick. La- uh, Last Geek has a Patreon to help make great content like this sports podcast. What? With a low price of $5 a month, what? That's you so can be cheap. a Patreon producer and get a shout out on every episode of Ready, Set, Gamecast, just like our following supporters did. Aaron C., Dragon Z. Lucas, Andrew Feister. Thank oh, you, man. guys. Oh, man. That's such a good deal. Why aren't you doing that already? get on it yeah people. five bucks that's like i'm gonna go get coffee yeah later do it or i'll make Sidney crosby come to your house and beat you up. oh my goodness um <laughs> is that what happened to teddy that mm, can neither confirm nor deny <laughs> i may have sent somebody uh bigger and uh more uh impactful let's say than uh sid uh <laughs> <laughs> topic of the show i i, I just threw this together because it, it seemed like it seemed applicable because WoW Classic will have oh, launched man. by the time this podcast goes live. Wow! And so I wanted to talk about kind of legacy live games or games that seem to keep you know trucking, they sustaining. They just keep going, and nobody knows why. <laughs> For WoW, they literally hit the reset button. No Man's Sky just had the Beyond update that made it more close to i think what everyone thought the game was going to be when it launched what two years years ago two years ago three years ago three years ago maybe three years ago man bungie's you know independent and updating destiny and that's coming soon that's like the first time right they'll have their own vision yeah their own launch of destiny um for some reason, Minecraft has popped up on streams and youtube all over the place right now (laughs) i don't know why all of a sudden everyone's minecraft I don't play Minecraft, but I've been playing Minecraft, and I'm having a blast. And I guess Minecraft isn't really a live game, but for some reason, it's sustaining. It's it, around. Oh, Minecraft totally is a live game. Like, they they have Minecon every year. Mm, that's like, true. Microsoft does, like, release all sorts of packs. and Yeah, they release a ton of skins for it. Um, like, they still update both the Bedrock version and the Java version. Bedrock is, like, the version that all of the consoles and like mobile right, that's devices the console have. version but you can get uh, it on pc yeah basically and uh, why would you because it feels super weird and java the java version is phenomenal it's like feels way better to play you can mod it you can yeah, you can mod it a whole lot more yeah. um it's way better uh but holy like absolutely a live service game um that just keeps going it just keeps is it like is it related to like is Fortnite down right now? So all these other games are. are I don't. I mean, up. I don't think Fortnite is down. I think people uh, like. Uh, I think Fortnite found its like its limit. Its groove, like, I guess. Yeah, yeah it found it's... its 
like max capacity right like it it had it just like PUBG did like it had a huge explosion right and then tapered off and has a very steady very loyal very large player base um i bet number wise like fortnite was still exploding though until probably the last three months mm -hmm. you know probably only started seeing a dip in the last yeah three to six months if even a dip like if it was i feel like it just kind of plateaued in terms of at least in terms of like talk around it right Right. like and and people in my circles playing it um i know a ton of people still play it because it's free to play uh it's super easy to get into um like just most people i know are kind of over it um pub g is still there still i've seen that get a, like stuff. a re i guess activation of yeah you know it's, interest yeah it, that's that's coming up we've got uh yeah i mean you mentioned destiny um uh, destiny is a, re- a really interesting live service like they announced that as a live service game for like when they first announced destiny one destiny 2 yeah. came out and was very clearly going to be a live service game uh and now shadow keep like it seems like they're doing some of the right things i've kind of hit my uh, yeah. capacity for destiny recently okay but, uh i'm sure i'll get back into it with the new launch but yeah i haven't played since the launch of destiny 2 i didn't play any of the dlc this time around oh, when man. destiny 1 i put in i think around 2000 hours mm-hmm. give or take um so like I, i've i guess fallen off mm-hmm. at this point but it, it's it's always there it's just like should i just jump back in is it time and now they've got cross save so like i i have a much better pc than i did i started on ps3 mm-hmm. in destiny and that's probably why i stuck with it mm-hmm. for so long as i stuck with that and then i got a ps4 and got taken king and yeah. then you know kept kind of going with it so now that i have a a good enough rig that i could run it well mm-hmm. Like, do I just jump back in and then like, oh, if I want to raid, yeah. I can jump over to PlayStation and play with people that I know are on there yeah, to raid. Which and... is, like, that's awesome. Cross save. Mm-hmm. If you're going to do a live service game, I, I think now cross save is like, you got to have it. Like, it's finally hit that point where, yeah, it's at become. At the very least, you have to have cross save. Cross yeah. play is ideal. Um, I, I crossplay is almost like just unnecessary too, though for a lot of cases. Yeah, I mean, I think. It, it depends. Um, I mean, it could. I guess it would be useful for like like it's in Dauntless, right? And Dauntless, it's it's very Dauntless seamless because I own this game called Monster Hunter World. You have Monster Hunter, uh, yeah. Well, if you want the oh Destiny version, the light RPG version of Monster oh, Hunter World. Yeah, let me let me tell you how still updated Monster Hunter World is getting. Uh, man, Monster Hunter World, Iceborne, Iceborne, legit like Iceborne might end up being my game of the year. Uh, <laughs> Monster Hunter World would have been my game of the year actually last year if it weren't for God of War. Um, I played more Monster Hunter World than any other game, and the fact that it's getting Iceborne and Iceborne is, is like huge. There's a ton of new monsters there's a big area there's like new mechanics for combat 40 it's a 40 dollar expansion like it's an okay so it's an expansion it's not Um, just a dlc it's it's almost like a a second game yeah we were getting updates for monster hunter world um gosh uh up until like up through march or april this year like we got new content updates um for it for basically a year after launch um once they announced iceborne i think that's when things got they were like okay this is monster hunter world and now everything that that they announced going forward is monster hunter world iceborne which is kind of the definitive edition of uh of monster hunter world um they're introducing a new difficulty uh a new uh, like all sorts of new armor and stuff like it, it looks legit i am really excited to get into that i'm gonna buy it three times just like i bought monster hunter world <laughs> uh i'm gonna play it on my playstation and my xbox and my pc when it comes out in january Too bad you don't have cross save right uh <laughs> that that would be huge for that um like monster hunter might be the only game that can get away with it though because it's so darn good like it's just so good and man anyway live service games 
Yeah. What's, wow classic how long is that gonna really stick around though like well i was thinking like right now they're releasing it bugs and all right in original mm-hmm. originalness I, I don't know visually if they use like the upgrade they did or if mm-hmm. they went full-on visual mm-hmm. originalness too but i i could see them like at least then going through and doing some of the quality of life stuff they have now mm-hmm like laid over it so it's like okay the game functions a lot better but now we're gonna slowly (laughs) re-release like the game with with like the modern level of wow to it yeah i i i can't see that sticking around too long like wow especially recently it's what it came out it's 15 years old five 2004 yeah it's a 15 year old game Uh, I mean, it's going to have some nostalgic kick to it. It's probably going to have a big first day user base. And then it's going to, I feel like it's going to drop off pretty fast um, in terms of player base. I may be wrong uh, for all the people who are excited for WoW Classic. I hope I'm wrong, Um, but I I don't have high hopes for the longevity of that game. The other thing I was thinking is like they could just follow the DLC path. Mm-hmm. or an expansion path and then in 15 years again mm. re-release wow classic yeah i mean who <laughs> wow knows classic, like, classic. <laughs> why make new content we just keep the same servers and just keep cycling like every 15 years you'll have this the people who came in at whatever point getting their uh <laughs> getting their wow on oh man i don't know man that game feels dated to me uh well, as yeah like uh, somebody who's been playing final fantasy 14 online quite a bit which i didn't mention because i've I, like i've been taking a break from it i yeah i started people in, really love that game started in march february something like that uh like playing in earnest and it's fantastic but uh, how i've been playing it basically i've been playing it an expansion at a time in like a month chunk um so like i played through all of the original final fantasy 14 a realm reborn uh content uh and then i took like a couple of weeks off and then i played through heaven's word which is phenomenal and now i'm on like another like month break i think underlords has extended that a little bit uh, it seems like uh, but, final fantasy 14's become like the go-to mmo for everyone at I this think point if you want a traditional mmo i think uh, Final Fantasy XIV is the best option for you out there right now. Um, like uh, it, the if you want a traditional MMO that's modern still and and updated, it is very very good. Um, it's got great uh, like it, it has a great story. It's got really really great options for like partying up and playing with other people. Um, there's uh, all sorts of like there's tons of stuff to do uh, especially now with uh shadow bringers um not to be mixed up with shadow keep and destiny but shadow bringers uh w- was a huge release great reviews from like everybody um out there it's uh it's really good um so i haven't played any content from uh shadow bringers except uh one of the new classes the gunbreaker um, which is really fun tank. Uh, That's a cool name, but yeah. Oh my gosh, right? And you have a gun blade. Like that's your okay. weapon is a big old sword with a gun on it. Like it's it's so it's so Final yeah. Fantasy and it's so cool. But uh, yeah, that's like I think that's the traditional subscription based MMO that if you want a traditional subscription based MMO, that's the one to go for. Um, from what I hear wow current wow has kind of uh kicked yeah, itself the in the ball battle for azeroth did not go over as well mm-hmm. as people had hoped I yeah guess. but maybe that just adds more to wow classic you know maybe that adds more fuel there yeah and again i'll, I'll even with that i think that's gonna like i think people are gonna hit that and then realize I man know, this just... is dated it's nostalgic for a little while, but but man, this isn't they, fun. This they is do their work. Leroy Jenkins, and then they yeah. they drop off it. Yeah. Um. But now Final Fantasy fourteen online, primo, primo game. A great example of a live service game. Um, for doing it right, you know, like yeah, sure they take fifteen bucks a month, but uh, they do a lot of really 
really good stuff. So um, there's a ton of content you can you can buy there. Like I think one of my favorite things that exists in the game that I don't partake in specifically myself is the uh, the real estate system. Like there's oh, okay. legit. There's actually a limited number of real estate slots per server um, or per world. Like so, there's you have to wait for a plot of land to go on sale to buy it huh. and uh yeah it's um it's really cool like you can that is, that's pretty cool <laughs> yeah you can have <laughs> your cool. your guild or your free company um is what they're called in final fantasy uh, if you're part of a free company you can buy a house for the free company which is cool um my free company's got a mansion we're super awesome <laughs> uh i can take zero credit for that um because i joined like after they had bought that but uh anyway um, <laughs> anyway uh yeah there's a ton of stuff in final fantasy 14 uh so everybody should go play it it's awesome it's fun and uh you, if you play it you can join me and have a whole lot of awesome fun um once my addiction to uh underlords has broken <laughs> You can also go to lastgeek.com for links to the podcast on all your favorite podcast services, what? including iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher, as well as the video version on YouTube. Whoa. Oh, wait. I skipped, I skipped the question part. Oh, there's no questions from the There are the no viewers. questions right now. Way to go, but viewers. But if you, if you want to be part of the show, go to readysetgamecast.com slash submit to submit a question, comment, or your favorite parentheses for well what would you i think you can fill it in oh your favorite your, parentheses maybe your favorite punctuation yeah that, for us maybe, to read on the show maybe that's just bryce's favorite punctuation yeah uh, what's your favorite type of fork i want to know uh, do you like the the little hmm. prawn fork do you like the uh, giant long dinner fork that's like uncomfortably long and you no, feel like you're I gonna like, stab yourself i always choose the smaller spooner fork Mm, always mm. the smaller utensil i don't know why yeah i well the spoon especially if you're eating like soup you got to fit the whole spoon in your mouth and you don't yeah, want to be I, like like the big spoon deep like, throating it you know you, you don't want to yeah. ladle uh no <laughs> so uh yeah maybe just a mug for I, know, soup. I always like a, a mid-sized fork i think they're usually called salad forks like that's what i'm always about okay um, yeah, it, it just in terms I of forks. i don't know that i have a dessert fork in that case then Ooh, yeah i mean i use i use the salad fork for dessert like and uh, the only thing i think of off, off the top of my head is uh cheesecake because that's literally my favorite dessert uh just plain that's a good cheesecake choice. that's a good choice don't at me plain cheesecake is the best uh no you know what at me i will fight you over that um <laughs> where can they at you they, you can at me at super killer bunny that's k-i-l-r-b-u-n-y and you do spell the full super out um you can at Super Killer Bunny on Twitter. You can follow me on twitch.tv slash Super Killer Bunny. Um, and, you know, I stream every once in a while. It'll be on Sundays, Wednesdays, or Thursdays recent, nowadays. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I don't do the YouTube shenanigans, usually. Also, if you like the show... You can subscribe, rate, and review it on iTunes and Stitcher. Definitely it review us... it on iTunes. iTunes? Mm hmm What about rating it? R review okay. it, rate it. Well, if you review it, you have to give it a rating. Oh, okay, okay. Clearly, so I didn't know that. give it a five-star rating. Say, uh, just five-star rating in the review. Leave your favorite fork. Uh, or, or say, I would like Matt and Bunny to, to come back. Yeah, if you want this podcast to just I don't miss be Teddy. Matt and Bunny um, yeah. leave that in the review as well five stars Yeah. if you give it anything than five stars I will send Sidney Crosby to your house to beat you up <laughs> uh, it says everyone flexes everyone flexes I can't like uh, these are just bones uh, it helps like, us to grow and become more powerful yeah if you it, like fix these bones guys there's nothing there Man, there's a lot of housekeeping. This list is like a laundry list <laughs> over here. Keep some stuff. Let's let's sweep All it right. up. You know, we we plugged we plugged Super Killer Bunny on Twitch, Twitter. It's uh, let's see, Captain Cucumber, else, right? No, wait, oh no, it is Dilbert Pickled, spelled like Dilbert, like the comic Pickled, like a pickle with a D on the end. 
Oh, he got it gosh. Dilbert it's, pickled. It's great. <laughs> it's this so beautiful. Good. It's this beautiful thing. I'm on Twitch. I'm also on Twitter. Uh, yeah, that's that's the important stuff. It doesn't really matter the other things, you know. Streaming multiple times a week. Um, what else? There's a new game mate corp. I've been told it's out. According there. to this, somewhere this bullet point. I don't know what they talked about. Hey, let's let's do a little game mate corp right now. If you were gonna make a video game, would would it be oh. about a fork? Because it seemed like yeah, it, it was gonna I, be it about would a fork. Be a utensil uh, auto battler. Um. We oh, have, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you're leveling your dessert fork up to the dinner fork. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, depending, it it depends. Like, y- you might have, uh, you might have a plate, right? Like, okay, you might have a plate. You might have some bowls. Um, but we're definitely like chopsticks gonna have, show up. Oh yeah, chopsticks and, are gonna yeah. show up. We're gonna see all sorts of weird stuff showing up. You'll have a ladle. Like that'll be. That's probably gonna oh, be yeah. like a yeah, main tank. A ladle. Would you have a, a spatula? Oh, absolutely. A you golden can't, spatula. Yeah, yeah, like spatula. So your spatula is going to start. It's a plastic spatula, right? You, oh, your, okay. Your one star is a plastic spatula. Your two star, though, gets, it gets a little bit nicer. It gets metal. Three star, right. though, we're going grill spatula over here. It's okay. like you're I like getting this. The grill powerful. utensils, yep. yeah. Uh, we're going to have tongs. Some tongs. Man, yep, exactly. Those be o- o- overpowered tongs. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it is the best auto battler based on the dinner table what uh, are that you, what are you calling it ever existed it's uh i, I think uh we're, we're probably gonna call it eat out um i i think that's what i'll call it unless you have a better name i think <laughs> no i think that's a an all new way to dine an eat all out. new way to dine it might be the best way to dine um but we just did their job for them all right yeah game mate corp it's out there it's out featuring it's in this out. episode uh, as well of uh, Ready Set Gamecast. Um, Last Geek also has a merch store, so if you want to see uh, totally our faces on a t-shirt with some this other one. random dude, that this one. one. And then there's some other random dude. He's th- th- over there. Uh, you know, we our faces get... won't be on the <laughs> merch, by the way, just to clarify. Yeah, our faces will not, but Bryce and Darian... <laughs> Uh, oh right, and the that Bryce other guy that we killed. Um, they're on a t-shirt. Beardless Darian. Yeah, beardless Darian is pre hair dye. Um, mm. this time, uh, stickers, t-shirts, even leggings for your favorite hey. Last Geek products like this podcast. Uh, we have already covered where people can find us. Yeah. Uh, you can find Darian, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Dexterity. Dexterity. It's like Dexterity, except instead of the T Y at the end, it's D. E E, mm-hmm. and apparently right. you can go to dexterd.com like a pro and get links to stuff from there bryce uh-huh. is all the last geek stuff we know that bryce is last geek plays like everywhere teddy is dead so you don't Teddy's need to missing, bother yeah. going just to gone. twitch.tv slash teddy chenaris or twitter.com slash teddy chenaris or youtube.com slash teddy chenaris like you don't need to go to those at all no definitely not um since he's dead uh there will be an in memoriam soon uh all right well that's <laughs> Pour been one out for teddy a, an episode of ready set gamecast gamecast sports bye <laughs> <laughs>